All right, for our first example, let's take a look at a type of collision which we would call perfectly inelastic um, or a hit and stick collision. So let's say that we have a two kilogram red cart, that's the mass of the red cart, and is moving to the right with a speed of 80 centimeters per second when it collides with a four kilogram blue car moving to the right with a speed of 20 centimeters per second. After the collision, we're told that the two carts stick together and we're asked to solve for their final velocity. In other words, the final velocity that they both share as they are now both moving as one object. I'll begin as I would recommend you begin all of these problems and I will draw a picture of what's happening. All right, I've gone ahead and sketched uh, the before collision scenario and the after collision scenario and I've labeled the masses of the carts and the speeds of the carts that I was given on my diagram. This will really help solve problems if you can visualize what's happening in addition to being given the text uh, description. All right, now I'm going to solve this problem using a combination of this momentum table right here and some equations. And so I'll show you how the table can be a really useful tool in helping you keep track of what's going on here. We may not use every single part of the table, but it's a good idea to draw this table when solving problems involving collisions of any kind just to help you keep track of what's going on. So let's go ahead and start filling out the table with what we know. We know that before the collision, the red car has a mass of 2 kilograms and a speed of 80 centimeters per second. So I know that it has 160 kilograms times centimeter per second units of momentum. Again, these are going to be momentum values. So I'll multiply the mass by the speed of the red car before the collision. And before the collision, the blue car has a mass of 4 kilograms and a speed of 20. So that'll be 80 4 times 20 kilogram times centimeter per second. The system here will just be the two carts added together. So 160, that'll be plus 80 here, would be 240 units of momentum together. So total, the system has 240 positive units of momentum before the collision. I know then that for momentum to be conserved, the system must also have 240 units afterwards. I know that's going to be true here. I'm not, ha I don't have any external forces. So in other words, the change in momentum of the system should always be zero, right? So this should always be zero. And these systems before and after should be the same if we have a system that does not violate the law of conservation of momentum. In other words, there are no external forces. All right. After the collision, we don't know the velocity of either car, but we know they're going to be the same right? So you could write this like such. You could say that this is going to be the mass of the red car multiplied by that final velocity, right? And we know that the mass of the red car didn't change. So I can actually fill that in in a moment. And then the momentum of the blue car after the collision is just that mass of the blue car times the final velocity. This VF is the same VF, right? So I'll actually just show that in black. Right. There's only one final velocity. They both have the same velocity. They are moving together as one object. And so I know if I look at these, I'm just going to look at this area now, right? I know that when I'm looking at the system, it's always going to be the two objects' momentums added together. So it's going to be this one plus this one will be equal to 240. So I've just basically gotten my equation. I'm going to write that out below here. I know that the mass of the red car multiplied by that final velocity will be added to, so if I add them, to the mass of the blue car times, again, that final velocity, that's going to be equal to 240, right? But I know the mass of the red and blue car, so I'm going to go ahead and just plug those in here. So that'll be 2 times VF plus 4 times VF is equal to 240. So 6 VF is 240. That means the final velocity of the two cars together is 240 divided by 6. It's going to be 40 meters per second. That's positive, right? So it's going to be moving to the right, which is what I was expecting. All right, now if we didn't use the table, let me show you how this would look instead. Okay, so if you just wanted to use equations, this is another way of thinking about it. We talked about how the change or the delta in momentum of the system is zero. So that means that the momentum of the system before and after is equal to each other. And that means that the 
momentum of the red and blue before must equal the momentum of the red and blue after, which means that the mass, so you see how this goes. Um, and so eventually you'll get an expression that will lead you to the same answer. But you can see how much algebra and symbology this looks like. That's why using the momentum tables to keep track of things before just jumping into equations can be a really useful tool when solving conservation of momentum problems. And so for that reason, I strongly recommend you draw a momentum table like this one shown when you're solving problems involving collisions.